excited about jelly printing because it is one of my favorite things to do. It's just fun. It's addictive. Here's the thing about jelly printing. You can just get in the zone once you start and you can just keep going and the, the amount of like creative ideas that come pouring out when you do jelly printing is just like you can't stop. You can keep asking me questions because I can see that while I'm working. All right. Ellen wanted to know if I use the dry wax deli paper. Yes, they're dry wax deli paper. But see, this is the deli paper and it's thin. It comes a lot of different ways. I don't like this brand as much as the last one I was using. It still works, right? Music sheets. One time someone gifted me a huge pile of music sheets. I think that's pretty cool. What about this? A dress pattern? I'm going to experiment. That's all I know. I got my rag here so I can wipe up as I go. I think another essential thing is baby wipes. Now my style is layers and just keep pulling up the layers with the paint of the layers and not clean it too often. Now another thing that makes for fun jelly printing is bubble wrap, small and large. I love the large ones, my favorite. This is called Punchinella. It's what they make sequins out of, but on Etsy you can buy the scraps from it. That's some cardboard packaging. These are little foamy things I found um, at Michael's ages ago. Uh, here, silicon pot holders. They have the most amazing patterns on them. Look at this one that I found at the dollar store with like a star pattern. And then the other thing that I use, so if you don't have the investment yet in stencils, I'm pretty sure you can find all that packaging. But I am pretty much a stencil hoarder. Well, I'm an art supply hoarder. It is my job after all. <laughs> you gotta let your brain kind of go wild over what kind of textures you can find. Anything that you can find that would make a print or a texture, any surface to print on. Now color wise, you know, I love my golden paints and I love transparent colors because they layer beautifully. So you, knowing a little bit of color theory really does help um, because what happens if I layer the turquoise over the magenta, I'm going to get purple, but eventually you're going to end up with mud if you're not careful. So I have a bunch of colors here. I'll try to tell you what I'm using as I put it down. If you have questions along the way, go ahead and ask. This is a brayer. It's a, called a soft brayer, not a hard brayer, which means it's a little bit like squishy to the touch. And then you saw how much I put out. That was actually probably too much. And I'm gonna go ahead and roll it out as thin as possible. And then I have this paper here on the side because it's my discharge. Um, so there you go. Now it's on here. Depending on your climate, it can dry really fast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go quick just to show you. We're gonna press this down. I never waste the paint. So you see I've discharged this here. Even this piece, after I've kind of squished it in here and I pull it up and it's leaving a print, I'm gonna take that paint and I'm gonna print it on this side paper here. So I'm kind of doubling up. See? I'm kind of doubling up my impact with this. And then I can just take, let's take this and we'll start by print, seeing how this print just is gonna be pretty simple, straightforward with the texture, but you can always layer. Layer, collage, and it does look really pretty. See? So you let those dry, they dry pretty fast. Now let's go for the next. I've got pink there. I think it would be nice to use a little bit of Indian yellow hue, just a little. And I'm going to use gold. I love gold so much. Um, you're asking about how you clean. The brayers I leave and let them dry and they build up a lot of layers. Eventually some of it might peel off, but it's fine. I just roll them off and see how I've discharged now. There's not much color left here. So I don't really clean my brayers as I go. So we're gonna go for some goldy gold colors and whatever's underneath is gonna pull up now. I'm going to double up my stenciling. We can start by just seeing what happens if we use this. I am feeling very floral and I'm going to just take up some of that paint by going like this. And then you have to push into all of those little spots that you can see through the paper where all the texture of the stencil is. Now look at, that looks beautiful, but then the layers over the pink look really nice. And then when I pull this off, I have a print that's gonna look really lovely. But what I'm gonna do first, instead of 
going to print it right now. I'm gonna let it dry for a minute. It needs about one or so minutes in my humidity. And once it's dry, I'm gonna put another layer of paint over it and pull the whole print off. And that is my favorite layering technique. Let's see. I think I might just do it on paper. I like using the copy paper because it's thin enough that I can then use it in collage. I have used heavier paper. As long as it's smooth and clean, it should pull everything off. Um, so I'm my next color choice. I think this is dry enough. Once it starts getting dry, the next layer won't pull up the under layer. So that um, it won't pull it up while you put the paint on, but then when you go to pull up with the paper. So I'm carefully rolling out all this green paint. This is green gold. And I'm gonna roll this over on this side, and then I'm gonna pull up using this. It works, so I'm gonna push it down, especially getting those edges, because I find that the edges around the jelly plate hold a lot of the leftover paint from the layers before, and they really start building up really beautiful interesting layers that almost create a work of art in and of itself here we go the texture of the leaf didn't show up as bright as i expected but it's such a beautiful and i like it when it does this kind of like rough edges almost like an old photo or an old work of art anyhow another pretty start let's see let's move on from there one of my favorite colors turquoise i'm gonna go ahead and roll that out there was still a little green left on my brush on my brayer. Here's something you can do. Take texture. This is like a Princeton makes these brushes here. Now I'm making like my own texture. Let's just go ahead and do it on a, another piece of jelly paper. And I'm going to do this light and quick so that I leave a lot behind. So look at how cool that looks. And that's going to dry and I can put more layers on it. But now I've got this here happening. Um, I'm talking and letting this dry because I pulled off a layer. If I let this dry a little and then add another layer on it, I'm going to get some interesting textures happening here. And that's my favorite thing to do. So with this one, well, if I use yellow, it's going to turn green, right? So we know our color theory. It's important. So I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow. Then I'm going to go ahead and just use another texture making, use regular size bubble wrap here. I'm going to put it down right here so I can use it up. Yep, that's kind of cool. Then I'm going to put this here and take one of my pages. I'm going to pull up as much as I can. I'm going to do this a couple times because I like this print and I want to keep using it. Then we're going to have another layer dry that we have to pull up. See, that ended up pulling that whole section off because I wasn't being careful, but that's okay. Now this is kind of looking cool, but I don't want to be done quite yet. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let that dry. I've got this here that's creating all kinds of weird texture, right? Then I'm going to use white. White is opaque. So white fluid Liquitex Professional Gesso is going to be opaque which means when we pull this up, we're more likely to see the design, I hope, because whatever's on top is going on the bottom of your design on your page. I don't know if you really think about those kind of reverse effects because that's what touches the page first, right? So now let's pull it all up and see if that worked or if I'm gonna have to just keep going with more layers. But do you notice I haven't cleaned it at all? because I keep layering to see what happens next. And I've got a really pretty, like very bright lime green looking piece with all kinds of crazy textures, which I love. And I love what's left here. So let's just play around with that. I'm gonna do that one. And a little bit of, so that's teal. And this one's Indian yellow hue. I'm gonna roll those out separately. And I still have a little paint on here, so it's kind of creating all kinds of cool textures. We'll go ahead and make some marks here. Still being very thoughtful of my color patterns. Okay, so let's do some texture here. I'm gonna go ahead and do texture first. I'm gonna use these little plates because they're pretty fun. I'm moving that so that I can print it if there is much print to come up, because there's a lot of paint on this. And I'm gonna pull up some flowers. And I love that I can just get more layers on all of this. And I think I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, this is drying out. 
a little bit. I don't mind here. I think I want that to flow in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave that side. So it's already drying, so I'm gonna pull some up here. So you don't have to make a perfect square. That's an interesting texture. And that way I can do my next layer. I wish I had more pink. I, ha I would have to mix pink. I do have red though. Red would be weird because you know red and blue is gonna just create more, and the greenish, it's gonna create more mud. I think I could probably pull it off with this one. How's that? I have a feeling these colors are gonna be really pretty. And I want a bigger layer of floral. Oh, I have found these really strange ones actually on Amazon. I'm going to try the brown paper because I think that the, the design there will be... I'm just going to pull a little bit off the middle. Look at that. Now I'll take a piece of white paper. Now look at how cool this is with that many layers how colorful and wild this piece turned out. I can see that like being on the front of an art journal or something. So I love how this texture and pattern, you can't really plan it. That's the thing about it. You really do just have to keep playing and playing until it all makes sense to you. I'm just gonna layer a little bit more. This, these colors might not turn out perfect, but no one cares, right? No perfection. What we really care about is having fun especially with the jelly plate. If you get all hung up on needing perfect prints, you are not gonna enjoy this process, I'm telling you. This is really, definitely, without a doubt, a process that just needs to let go and, and just have fun. But, you know, throw some crazy ideas my way. Jelly printing is just the beginning. We'll take those, I'm gonna take the collage elements and make big, floral, collage, mixed media. I want to make um, more journals. Look at how fun that is. Now that, because there was no color on the background, they have very much this sharp white graphic design. But I can see that that could still turn into something pretty amazing. Now, there's that. And what color is gonna go best? Let's go for something. I'm afraid if I go dark, it's not gonna pop off, but that is opaque, so let's just try. We have to just try. Really light. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and use a music sheet and cross my fingers. And it's not even even. Look at that whole line over there that I missed. Silly, silly. All right, that's pretty, but I was right. It's a very light hint. You can see it. So probably make great collage material, but it's not really strong. That's the risk you take. When printing, I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? Can you make prints that don't turn out right and be okay with that? That's my question. All right, you guys, so in the end, what I like to do is just take baby wipes because you can just take soap and water as well and just clean it up and then put it back in its plastic case that it came with because that plastic case keeps it flat, keeps the, um, the gel flat on it because it will mold if you left it on something with texture it'll, it'll mold to that texture and then it won't be perfect anymore if you have questions about jelly printing I do recommend contacting jelly or going to their site because it's a wealth of information I hope that was fun hopefully you'll have fun and just play with it because that's the most important thing is to just play and that in playing and doing and even in failing that's going to be how you learn the most all right well have a great weekend